I'm Janice Edwards, coming up on Bay Area Vista. He's performed for the Pope and on America's Got Talent. Singer Manuel Romero joins us for the third time right here on Bay Area Vista. He'll perform his newest song, Birthday Queen. Then, The Sweet Bye Bye is a best-selling novel that's now a play. Author Denise Mitchell, Michelle Harris and the two lead actors are with us, so don't say bye-bye. Say hello. A great Bay Area Vista is coming up next. Join us. Conklin Brothers of San Mateo has provided in-studio flooring for Bay Area Vista. Conklin Brothers' motto is, you can count on us. Welcome to Bay Area Vista. I'm Janice Edwards. Our first guest today has been with us for many milestone shows, and People in Espanol has said that he is good news for the music industry, and his performances are truly music to our ears. Manuel Romero has performed off Broadway and in Las Vegas, and we are so excited to have him back with us. Manuel, nice to see you. It's so nice to see you too. Thank you very much for having me back on the show. It's such a pleasure. <laughs> oh, well, it's great. I Before when you were on, the first time you were 13, and I used to show that clip, but Manuel's 22 now, so we're not going to. <laughs> So that, and doing such incredible things. I mentioned America's Got Talent. I think last time I saw you, you had just done that. But you've been doing so many shows here, Las Vegas. What's been most exciting for you as you're expanding your career? You know, it's all been just uh, such a great blessing. Every, every show, every performance, uh, every time I sit down and, and get to play my guitar and, and just entertain people, it's just such a, such a blessing. So, you know, I've enjoyed every step of the way, and I'm really looking forward to everything that uh, is still to come. Yes, I know, and you've acted in plays. Do you pref did you prefer that, or do you, I mean, music is still your first love, right? No, music is is obviously still my first uh, my my first love, and and uh, but through music, I've had the chance to uh, you know act. Uh, I just uh, I did a, the Buddy Holly story in La yes. in Los Angeles at the La Mirada Theater, and uh, that was a that was such an awesome experience. Um, I've done uh, some other stage acting, like uh, uh, Alter Boys, which right. is just a, an awesome musical. And, uh, you know, so I got a chance to get out there and act, do a little acting, but never uh, left completely music. You know, I always, you know, got the chance to sing and dance on stage. So it was, it was, a, it was a good experience. Musical theater. And, of yeah. course, we in the Bay Area feel very protective of you because <laughs> this is home. But as you are expanding in, in Las Vegas and in Los Angeles, what do you notice about the industry there? How do you feel about, as you're moving forward, what, are there any things that you're aware of or cautious of? Because I know it's a very close-knit family that's all involved yeah. With your career well you know I, I've uh, been in this business for for a while now and uh, I've seen a lot of things and and just you know kind of leaving home uh, it's a little scary at first of course you know you're, you're meeting new people and you're getting used to a different uh, lifestyle but um, you know I hold very close to to the values and, and everything that I've learned along the way uh, both uh, from my my parents and my family and from the people that I've worked with you know here in the Bay Area you know it's it's uh, something that I stay very true to. I don't. I don't really want to change much. Uh, we want to just uh, get the music out there, let people know about Manuel Romero, and uh, you know, do big things. But um, as far as uh, my lifestyle, you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable with uh, sitting in the backyard and having a good uh, a barbecue with the family and friends, and, and that uh, I don't plan on changing that ever. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. I'm sure your fans would love to be there for one of those barbecues as well. Now, you sing in Spanish, you sing in English. There's so many different genres. You you did one that I love, which is your uh, gospel, if you will, and then you have so many different ones, and you're expanding to an another type of music now. What, what are you doing? Yeah, um, I'm working on a new project right now, which... Uh, it involves all my own original music, okay. all songs that I've written, and uh, on some of them I've collaborated with my father as well. And uh, this uh, this is a brand new style for me. It's it's a little bit of a combination between uh, music like uh, regional Mexican, uh, you know, which involves uh, mariachi and banda and everything, which is kind of what I grew up with with my with my father being from Mexico City. And uh, I'm also throwing in, uh, you know, all the stuff that I like to listen to on the radio today. You know, the pop stuff, all, all the uh, R&B, hip hop. Trying to trying to blend that in to make this new uh, region Mexican pop genre, if you will. You know, and it's a, it's a really cool thing because I can see when I perform 
you see young people out there, uh, you know, enjoying the music and dancing and singing along. But you also see the parents, mm -hmm. you know, and you see even the grandparents out there, and, and they're enjoying the music because it's a very good, healthy message, and. Uh, you know, they, they just, uh, they're having a good time out there. And that's one of the things that's important to you is to make sure that the message oh. is healthy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's the main thing in my music. You know, it always has to have a positive message, whether that, uh, you know, one of my uh, biggest songs right now that's, uh, you know, selling on, on iTunes and it's uh, the YouTube hits are going way up. Uh, it's called Como Hace Quince Años. And right. I wrote that song for my sister when she turned 15. Because right. uh, the quinceañera is quinceañera such a big time. Quinceañera is such a huge thing. So, so I decided I was going to write this song special for her. And uh, so many great things came from that song. But now the remix of that song is called Birthday Queen. Uh -huh. And that's our, that's our brand new hit that I got to produce with uh, Mr. Nardo Michael Walden, a great, great producer yes. and musician. He's an institution. And, he oh, really he is. He, he is amazing. And it's a, it was such a privilege to be able to work with him, which actually I met Narda in uh, Las Vegas when I performed at the MGM Grand oh, wow. uh, in Vegas. And I was, uh, you know, the... You know, the, it kicked off a, a beautiful relationship between him and, and uh, our family, and, and he's just a wonderful man. Great, and we're going to see that performance in just That's a few right. minutes. That's so right. I was really <laughs> excited to have you here and be able to enjoy that as well. When you are looking at the songs that you write, like you said, the positive message is important, and you look at different artists who are out there in your age group, do you have any that you look to and think, okay, that's that's like me or some that you admire? Who do you listen to when you're not listening to yourself? I, you this? know, I, I love all different types of music. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as we, you know, I've uh, talked with you and you, you tell me that you like Roberto Carlos <laughs> and, and that's, uh, you know, a style of music that I grew up with, right. listening to, you know, hanging out with my dad and, and he, would, he would be playing those songs on, on the guitar. So, I mean, I like everything. Um, you know, I, my influences are Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, Luis Miguel, mm -hmm. Roberto Carlos, uh, all these uh, mariachi artists. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, you know, artists that are really awesome. I, you know, I think Bruno Mars is an amazing oh, artist. Oh, yes, I like him too. And, uh, amazing is his song too, right? That's You're amazing, right. You know, absolutely. I mean, he has, some, he has some great music. And, and, you know, anyone who's out there producing and writing and, and is successful with that, you know, I give them a round of applause because that's that's a beautiful thing when you can produce something that comes from your heart, mm -hmm. and uh, people can uh, can catch on to that. That's that's really an awesome thing. Yes, you know one of the things that impresses me about you, and I think that people starting in the business may not understand how much discipline it takes yeah. because you show up, you perform, you're ready to go. An opportunity can come at any moment. In addition to everything you're constantly doing in the studio, what's your normal routine like? Like if you're not performing on a particular day. What do you do to make sure that you are ready? You're ready for well. Sure. You know, I'm always trying to stay uh, stay active with uh, within the writing game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you guys, you got to wake up every day and you know be thinking about music. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's not hard for me because I love music so much. Right. But you know, I'm always writing a song. I'm always working on a you know on a hook for 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 a new song or something. And uh, you know, even sometimes when when I'm sitting at home relaxing, we get a call and. You know, someone wants me to come and sing, and and uh, you know, when when you're in that situation, you kind of want to just kick back and just say, "I'll do it next time." Right. But no, you gotta you gotta always be thinking about how can you advance your career, how can you advance, uh, how can you get your music out there, and and you know, have people always you got you want to be in people's faces. So so it's a it's a tough business, but it's so much fun. You know, being out on stage, there's not a there's not a feeling in the world that you know, makes me feel um, the way I feel when I'm out there on stage. So it's, it's, it's awesome. Yes, and it shines through too with that. <laughs> and one of the things that's so wonderful is that it is a family affair. Like you mentioned your dad, and like I said, the first time you were on Bay Area Vista, yeah. he was playing the guitar, and your mom has managed, and your brothers. How many are there total? We're, we're the five, uh, we're five, um, two, well, three, three boys and two girls, so five kids total. I'm the oldest, and uh, you know, it's, it's been awesome watching all these guys grow up with me also because they, they've, they've seen me perform since I was a little kid and they've grown up with that but now they, uh, they're not just watching, they want to be part of the group, they want to be part of the team and uh, my brother Jake handles all my photography and he's starting to do all my video and uh, that's, that's really something amazing to me because he's, uh, he's only 15 years old and he's, and he's really got some talent there. Wow. And then my brother Victor raps with me and he's starting to write his own song. So it's, and he's on you with Birthday Queen. He's on me with Birthday okay. Queen. So it's, yes. it's, uh, I'm glad that I could uh, inspire them in that way, you know, to do something 
do something positive. Yeah, so you continue to do positive things and it's so wonderful That's right. to have you here. Great to see you and continued success. Like I said, we may not be able to get you back in another for another Anytime. milestone show, but I hope we Anytime. can. <laughs> okay, I'm glad to see that. Well, you heard Manuel mention that he has worked with Nardo Michael Walden. Birthday Queen is the song he's going to perform, so this is what he performed earlier for us here. Take a look. Cause it's your birthday night Come on and grab somebody Vamos a bailar You are a princess A beautiful princess Girl Girl you're my princess My birthday queen princess Oh Como una reina want to contact Manuel Romero, here's how to do so. In the sweet bye-bye, author Denise Michelle Harris weaves the story of Chantel, who's searching for true love. Her novel earned its place on the Amazon.com top seller list two weeks after its debut. This fall, it's been performed at the Berkeley Black Repertory Theater in their ongoing shows. So Denise, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Janice. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Oh, and I have to say that we're going to have a scene from the play in just a few minutes. But first, I want to get sort of the backstory. This is a story with, with which a lot of women can identify because it's a woman who seemingly has it all, doesn't feel comfortable really revealing where she's not happy or that her relationship is not is more superficial than she'd like and why did you feel like this was a particular story that you wanted to tell you know that's a good question and I can see you've read the book <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, of course. we do our homework around here <laughs> um, I, I think uh, Janice said a lot of people uh, male and female I think oftentimes we wear masks. We, we walk around and we project uh, that we are one way or maybe we at home we have one particular way that we are and at, with our friends we're another way, at work we're another way and I think we wear a lot of masks and I think 
uh, particularly in the case of Chantel Myers, uh, she has worn these masks for so long uh, that she's kind of gotten out of touch with who she really is, what she really is about. And so that's why I wanted to write the story. And a family crisis really brings her to start to re-examine her relationship with God. Her father's sick and she makes a promise. And so then she's <laughs> called upon to start doing things differently. And, and she still has her moments of being um, politically incorrect, shall we say, with her co-workers. There's, yes. there's, there's something in there about what she puts in a Tiffany box that she sends a co-worker, <laughs> and that's that's something that you'll have to enjoy when you see the play or read it. So I won't give that all away. <laughs> okay. But the whole point is that she's dealing with office politics, she's trying to make it in the world, and she's dealing with the challenges of really knowing herself. Definitely, definitely. Um, when I meet people on the street and they say, oh, you've written a book, or you know, they heard a little bit about the book, um, they'll say, what is your book about? And, and oftentimes I'll tell them, I'll say that, you know, the book is about a, a young woman, and the closer she gets to her 30s or the older she gets, the more she starts to see that all that stuff that she thought was important in life, the Gucci and the Prada and the Fendi and the look at me, I'm so cute, mm -hmm. <laughs> is not really. And the really. superficial boyfriend. And the superficial boyfriend, look at us, we're super cute, and so that means everything is not necessarily what's important. But what's important is really knowing yourself, and like you said, self-esteem and God and family, and really knowing what's important. You know, so it's an essence of life kind of story. Yes, and we have a scene that two of the actors taped here. So tell me who we're going to see in the scene and what this scene is about. Okay, <laughs> it's a it's a great scene uh, at the beginning of the play, um, and it shows. I mean, the the story really is all about transformation. And so the the people that we're actually going to see are actress uh, Katie Ball. She's playing Chantel Myers, mm -hmm. and uh, the actor is Elijah Micah, and he is playing Eric. Her superficial boyfriend and she's superficial as well she's a diva so yeah. <laughs> so we'll take a look and I should mention that it does contain adult material so parents be warned if your children are watching okay let's take a look so Eric so Chantel what well you do know that I love you right okay then what can you explain to me why I'm being punished please baby you are so silly you are not being punished Look, this is uncomfortable for me too. I mean, I miss you too, trust. It's just that I feel like we're, no, I know that we're doing the right thing. Okay, so putting me on hold like this is the right thing, how? I'm listening. Look, baby, I understand what you're feeling. It's just that my promise and I can't, so, I mean. Okay, the solution is to sacrifice my needs for your promise, okay. Okay, that's Look, gonna be tough. Look, Eric, it's not like we're gonna go without sex forever. It's just <sighs> until we make that next level of commitment. Okay, Chantel, look, Chantel, you know that we've already been through that, and I know that you made a deal with God and all, and you're mm -hmm. trying to live right. Now, that's a good thing. I'm not knocking that, but you're gonna have to stop pressuring me, okay? And seriously, it's ridiculous anyway. We've already been having sex like forever so why can't we just keep doing what we've already been doing because eric yes we are supposed to be more connected okay uh after was it two years we are as connected as we're gonna be woman and this is some bull you whatever. know that we can yeah. be more connected eric okay right now i Chantel, i know where this is going and I want you to just chill out, all right? As a matter of fact, we're gonna change the subject. How's your dad doing? How's Mr. Harold? Well, you know my dad, he's a fighter. He's yeah. hanging in there. Yeah, okay, okay. That's good, that's good. Daddy always said I was a princess. And I believed him. In a way, I still did. I mean, a princess was attractive and single and she wore beautiful clothes. I mean, yeah, I tried to fill the bill, but I didn't like it when people called me stuck up or snooty. Just because I wanted to look presentable, that didn't make me a piece of work. I just wanted to put my best foot forward so that people saw me in a positive light. Just because I didn't go around showing people my pain, that didn't mean I didn't have any. Duh, people shouldn't know that. But hey, if they couldn't understand that, then too bad. Because I was not about to go around with my hair looking a mess, waving a little white flag, looking like I had trials in my life because what I went through was nobody's business. With me, everybody got the same story. The life of Chantel Myers was fantastic. Fantastic, thanks so much for Katie.
<laughs> Elijah, that was that was a great scene. And you know, I I want to know a little bit about your backstory because you worked for a corporate, you worked in a corporate environment, yes, just like Chantel the character does. And then, how did you decide that you were going to write this instead? <laughs> well, okay, first let me say the book is fiction. People okay. say all the time, "Is that you? Are you writing about? Do you know these people?" So I just made it all up. <laughs> so, so no Eric in your life. No, okay. I just made it all up. Okay, well, maybe a little, no. Anyway, <laughs> all right, um, <laughs> self protection here. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so I I was working in corporate America, and I think just looking around, and I'm the kind of person where I really just like to observe, you know, I observe personality types, I observe people, I observe the way people interact with each other. And so I think even myself, you know, observing my past behaviors and, you know, everybody around me, I think I just kind of meshed everything together and uh, and created this uh, this character, you know. And I played a lot of what if, you know. Yes, what if this happens? And what if that happened? Yeah, and then what if that happened? And then if that was the case, then what would her mother be like? And if that was the case, then what would her father? And so, right. sweet bye-bye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the audience reaction, how has that been for you to see this come from not just a novel, but then to have people respond to everything that you've written in the theater? Janice, it has been amazing. I mean, it, it's been, uh, exciting and terrifying and <laughs> and wonderful and and all of that just to see uh, just to see the the words come off the page and come a life you know yes. into like real people and then to see the the audience's uh, reaction to it um, I remember um, I remember I, I this was actually at a book signing but I remember I met a young lady and I was doing a, a book signing at a Borders I think and and she bought a book and I told her contact me and let me know what you think about what you read and so she says I will I promise I said okay so she emailed me and she says when I first um, started reading about this character reading about the story she says the first thing I thought was that girl in the mall she's writing about herself <laughs> and then and then she says you know and then I read a little bit more and she says I was thinking that lady who was wrote that book she's uh, writing about people I know you know and she says by the time she finished she says she was in tears and she said she's writing about me and so oh. and so that uh, I don't know if that can sum up you know but that, that's kind of my uh, summary of, of what it's been like uh, and getting different reactions and, and seeing people uh, uh, react to the character so my objective was that uh, hopefully people would be able to relate to it and, and it seems like uh, it seems like they are so I'm I'm thrilled and it was important to give people hope we won't give away the ending definitely exactly, but there is a happy ending yes, in the midst of that. yes yes definitely and Do that was very important for me to uh, to tell people to keep pushing to keep striving you know that uh, you can change and and that we all have good and bad and you know what I mean we're, right. we're uh, the sum total of, of of a lot of different things and it's okay and the objective is to keep pushing and to keep getting better and to keep progressing and getting stronger so that was my message exactly I'm wondering because you wrote the novel a lot of people give up before that's even achieved and then having the play what have been the biggest challenges that you had to overcome to seeing this dream become a reality by far probably my biggest challenge. I'm a writer and I've written, you know, my whole life, but my biggest challenge was probably um, that I'm not an editor. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> I am not an editor. <laughs> Fell in I love with your own words. Exactly. It's like, oh, it's I like, love this, this scene. Fine. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean? It has to have a period and a comma. What was that? You know? Right. No, I, <laughs> I, um, I love writing. I love, I absolutely love writing. Uh, the book was originally published with Warner Books, mm -hmm. and uh, they put it through, and it, with editing, that's the way it goes anyways, and you right. know this, um, but they put it through six different editors, so it went through six different pairs of eyes, mm -hmm. and so... Um, so the editing part was just no fun for me. <laughs> right. just the, you know, the, how about if we move the comma? The, the story is still mine exactly 100 percent but mm -hmm. how about we move the comma or you know what I mean or how right. about we you know we put a the technical things a, a, there yes can oh my hang goodness. you up a little bit not an editor right. <laughs> I'm not and an editor and that's why it's good to have a good team <laughs> this with is all true of are you working on another one now? I am I absolutely am um Chantelle Myers, uh, definitely in Sweet Bye Bye, it's kind of a journey of her getting her inner man, right, if mm -hmm. you will, getting grounded, getting centered. Right. And so, um, yeah, I, so and I, I like you, I don't want to give away the plot, right. but okay, so if she's taken on these tasks and she's kind of gotten her philosophies in a little bit of an order, I don't know, a little bit of an order, right. so then what's next, you know? So I want to show the world where she's at, 
uh, in book number two, and then book number three, I'd like to close it up, kind of like a trilogy. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. wonderful. And it's so true because we find that in life, we deal with a big hurdle and start to live differently in a certain way. But then there's the everyday walking through that where will you go back to an old habit? Exactly. Will you keep moving forward to the vision of living a more empowered life? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Wow. Do you do you fall? And if you fall, do you get back up? Or you know, once you've changed, you know, are you is are is it permanent? Is change permanent? You know. Right. So yeah, I want to address all those things. Lots of great questions. Well, Denise, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's been a blast. Yes, well, we've been glad to have you. And if you'd like to contact Denise, information is on our screen. Also, if you want to find out about performances, brown paper tickets. That's how you find out about all of those that are going on. So once again, Denise, thank you. And then I want to thank you for all that you've done to make our Bay Area the great place that it is. Thank you for joining us today. If you have questions about anything that you saw on today's show, please visit BayAreaVista.com. And please join us again next time. We look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a blast. I'm so I glad that you yes. yeah, I didn't did. know you were acting. <laughs>